Hey, welcome to edX world and today's topic that we're going to study is the correction of errors. This is one single topic where most students lose their marks. They find it very difficult to understand this topic. Some of them even leave this topic entirely for the exam. The single most reason why this happens is because this topic cannot be studied in isolation. You really need to have a strong foundation in accounting. You need to know all your basic chapters really well, right from the chapter where, they, where you learn debit and credit, journal, ledger, books of prime entries, business documents. So if once these chapters are clear, this chapter correction of error will not, you'll not find it difficult at all. It is very simple. Ultimately, if you know what is the right treatment of any accounting transaction, you, and if something is done incorrectly, you will be able to rectify it. But when the basics are not clear, you will not be able to easily understand this chapter. Yet, I have tried my best to make you understand all the different types of errors well in this chapter. I have taken up examples, the most commonly tested examples in this video. After watching this video completely, I believe at least 60 to 80% of the questions that come in exam, you will be able to answer them, at least if you understand these errors that I'm going to explain today. But using this video as a foundation and after getting good clarity on this topic, you will be able to solve any type of question related to this topic. So let's start this video. So what are we going to study today? First, we understand the difference between two-sided and one-sided errors. We'll see this some, we'll see some examples where we use journal entries to rectify two-sided errors first. Then we understand the use of suspense account and some journal entries to see the correction of one-sided errors. After correction of errors, the net profit of the business is bound to change. So we understand how the correction of error has affected the net profit of the business. After this video, if you feel like solving more questions on this topic, if you want access to our theory notes, you can consider purchasing our paid course, which is an online course just for $1.99. That'll give you access until June 2021. So first, understanding the difference between two-sided and one-sided errors. So the first difference is that two-sided errors affect both debit and credits in any entry equally. Okay. But in one-sided error, debits and credits are not equal. In other words, debit amount would be different than the credit amount. So this leads us to the second difference. In a two-sided error, the trial balance will match because debits and credits have been the entries for debits and credits have been passed equally. But in one-sided error where there's a mismatch between debits and credits, obviously when you prepare a trial balance, it will not match. So when the trial balance matches in case of a two-sided error, it is difficult to actually go and discover the error later because once the trial balance has matched, what we assume is that our accounting records are correct. Unless randomly we come across an error. But if the trial balance matches, we go ahead and prepare the financial statements and close the accounting books for that year. But when we see a mismatch in the trial balance, there we realize that there would be some, definitely some errors in the ledger or in the books of prime entries. We go back, look for the errors and rectify them. So it is much easier to make sure that one-sided errors are discovered and rectified. So the different types of two-sided errors will be discussed now. There are certain categories to be understood here. The first one is the error of omission. Error of omission is when a transaction is completely omitted from the books of accounts, from the accounting records. You completely do not record the transaction. If I have to take an example here, let's say goods worth 500 were sold to Mr. A, not recorded in the books completely. So if I have to correct this error, if I have to pass the rectification entry here, finally, my last entry would be rectification. But before that, I would like to do some working that will help me arrive at the rectification entry. So if I tell you to pass the correct entry for goods sold 500 to Mr. A, what would be your entry? Your entry would obviously be Mr. A debit 500 and sales would be credit 500. Now, now you realize why did I tell you that your basics have to be cleared because to get the correct entry of any transaction, you need to have a strong foundation in accounting. Did we pass any entry at all? No. Hence the wrong entry passed would obviously be nothing. Since no entry has been passed and we know a correct entry. So obviously a rectification entry would be nothing but the correct entry that is required for this transaction. Hence Mr. A debit sales credit 500. So this is our rectification entry for this error. Let's go to the 
second category of the error where, which is the error of commission error of commission is when you put the transaction in the wrong account of the same class meaning instead of one asset you debit or credit the other asset instead of one expense you debit or credit the other expense but the amount and the side is correct it's just that you've put the amount in the wrong account of the same class if i take an example check received from mr mike dollars 250 assuming mike is a debtor was correctly entered in the cash book but posted to michael account so if you realize michael is would also be one of their debtors so instead of posting it to mike account they posted it to michael account so this is an error of commission how do i correct this error first let us see what would be the correct entry for the transaction check received from mr mike 250 if i have to write the correct entry can i say since check is received from mike so bank debit 250 and mike credit 250 Next, what is the wrong entry that has been passed in this case? Instead of crediting Mike, they posted or credited it to Michael account. So I can say that my wrong entry would be bank debit 250 and Michael credit 250. I wanted my bank to be debited in the correct entry and the wrong entry also my bank is debited. So I don't need to bother about the bank account here. But now, Mike should have been credited in the correct entry, but I have not yet credited Mike. Michael should not have been credited, but I have credited Michael by mistake. So can I say the rectification would be to correct the wrong entry that was passed. So to do that, I will say Michael debit 250 and Mike credit 250. Now this cancels the wrong entry and also gives effect to the correct entry. Another example for error of commission, let's say salary paid 500 is debited to rent account. So what would be the correct entry? Obviously salary is paid. So salary is debited 500 and let's say paid by cash or you assume by check doesn't make a difference here, but they debited to rent account. So in my wrong entry, I will say rent debit 500. Nothing is mentioned about the credit side of the transaction. So we assume it is done correctly. There's only a mistake on the debit side. Now, if you compare the correct and wrong entry, we wanted a cash to be credit. Cash is credited. No need to pass any entry for that. But we wanted a salary to be debited. So in my rectification entry, obviously, I will have my salary debited as 500. Now, rent was debited without any reason. So to correct that, you will have to reverse that by crediting rent 500. This becomes your rectification entry. Going to the third type of error, which is the error of principle. Now in an error of principle, transaction is posted to the wrong account of a different class altogether. Commission was wrong account of the same class. Error of principle is wrong account of a different class. Meaning what? Let's say a transaction is to be posted to an expense account, but I have posted it to an asset account. Apart from that, when incorrect accounting principles are followed, when recording the transactions, those situations are also known as error of principle. So let's have a look at the example here. Repairs to machinery worth $1,000. Now repairs is a revenue expenditure. We've already seen in the video on revenue versus capital expenditure, but they have treated it as capital expenditure and debited it to the machinery account. So in my correct entry, can I say my correct entry would be repairs debit $1,000. Assuming cash or you can assume bank, doesn't make a difference here. In my wrong entry, instead of debiting repairs, they have treated it as a capital expenditure and posted to machinery account. So the wrong entry that they've recorded is machinery debit $1,000 and cash credit $1,000. If you realize cash was to be credited, cash is credited. So no need for any effect there. Rep repairs should have been debited. So in my rectification entry, definitely I'll have to debit my repairs. Machinery was debited was not to be debited, but it is actually debited. So to reverse that, you will have to credit the machinery account both by $1,000. So this corrects your error of principle. Another example on error of principle, let's say cash paid $200 as owner's personal expenses were debited to salary account. You would be knowing that when owner's personal expenses are paid, those have to be treated as treated in the drawings account as per the accounting entity principle here incorrect accounting principle is followed and debited to salary account so this becomes an error of principle if i were to record this entry 
correctly in my books obviously my correct entry would be drawings debit 200 and cash credit 200 but they have debited it to salary account they did not debit it to the drawings account so salary debit 200 cash credit 200 so obviously to rectify you will have to debit your drawings account because that is the correct effect of this transaction and salary which was debited without any reason here that have to be reversed that will have to be reversed by crediting the salary account 200. I hope this made sense to you. Let's continue with our next category of two-sided error. Error of original entry. When a transaction is incorrectly recorded in the original book, which is the book of prime entry, when you first record the transaction in any accounting record, if that first transaction is incorrect, that error follows to all other accounting records. And hence, these type of errors are known as error of original entry. So example, cash was received from Javed 500. It Instead of recording it at a, as a receipt entry, it was recorded as a payment entry in the cash book. So if I were to record this correctly, I would say cash debit 500 and Javed credit 500. But they have recorded this as a payment entry. So Javed would be debit and cash would be credit each 500. Now, Think about it. If I were to rectify this, how would I do it? Now cash should have been debited by 500, but I have credited it by 500. So can I say that I will have to debit cash twice, which is thousand dollars. Why? Because first 500 to cancel the incorrect credit entry and next 500 to actually give effect for the correct debit entry. And in the same way, Javed will have to be credited by thousand dollars again. First credit to reverse the incorrect debit of Javed which is the which is this one and the second credit of 500 to actually give effect to the correct entry of the correct entry for the transaction so cash debit Javed credit thousand dollars another one in the error of original entry purchases costing two thousand dollars were recorded in the purchase journal as twenty thousand dollars so in the book of prime entry you've recorded that entry at the wrong amount that error will be continued in the supplier account, in the purchase account and eventually to, to the trial balance. Hence, this is an error of original entry. If I were to record the correct entry for this, obviously it would be purchase debit 2000 and supplier or creditor credit 2000. But the wrong entry passed, it's the same debit credit but with incorrect amounts. So let's give the amounts here, purchase debit 20,000 and supplier credit 20,000. Now try to think about it. How would you rectify this? Purchase should have been debited by just 2,000. You have debited it by actually 20,000, 18,000 more. So can I say to correct this error, you will have to credit the purchases by 18,000. In the same way, supplier should have been credited by just 2,000 but actually credited by $20,000. So to correct the supplier account or creditor account in the purchase ledger in the supplier account, you'll have to debit the account by $18,000. That becomes your rectification entry. The fifth category is the error of complete reversal where debits and credits are swapped in a transaction. The account that should have been debited is credited. Account that should have been credited is debited. Let's have a look at the example. Stationary expense paid $100 recorded on the debit side of cash book and posted to the credit side of stationary account. If you think about it, correct entry for this should have been stationary debit $100 and cash credit $100. Why? Because it's a payment entry. And but what have they done about it? They have debited the cash book. So cash has been debited $100 and Stationary has been credited 100. So how would you rectify it? Why don't you take a minute, pause the video, do it and then double check. You will make sure at least you're understanding better. So if I were to rectify this, what would I do? Can I say I would debit the stationary account here because in my correct entry stationary is debit by how much, what would be the amount? Can I say it would be double here because first 100 to rectify the incorrect credit and the next 100 to actually give effect to the 
debit effect and cash would be credit 100 using the same logic the last type of error here last type of two sided error compensating error see there are there may be one or more errors that are not linked to each other you must have made an error in one error in this account one error in that account and cumulatively the effect of that is that they cancel each other in some places debit has the debit has been done incorrectly in some places credit has been done incorrectly overall the effect is that they did not affect the trial balance and the trial balance matched such group of errors when they when they combined with each other they are known as compensating errors if taken individually they are not two sided errors but more, the moment they cancel the effect of each other and do not let the trial balance get affected they as a group they become compensating errors for example an amount of 100 received from abc was not credited to his account so debit was done correctly but the credit was not done correctly if i just take just take this error abc was not credited it is not a two sided error and total of sales day book was taken as 1100 instead of 1000 if i separate this error only the sales day book totaling is done incorrectly it is not a two sided error but if you realize in the first part credit was short by 100 in the second part credit was extra by 100 overall these two errors have not let the trial balance get affected and hence this the combination of these two errors is known as compensating error so how would i rectify this see an amount of 100 received from abc was not credited to the abc's account can i say the correct entry should have been abc credit 100 i'm not concerned about the debit part because that was done correctly and the total of sales day book was taken as 1100 instead of 1000 so my sales should have been credit 1000 based on the error given but what is the wrong entry that i passed i have not not passed anything for the abc error but for sales i have credited it by 1100 instead of 1000 now if i were to rectify this can i say sales which was to be credited by just 1000 actually credited by 1100 i can rectify that by debiting sales 100 dollars to just reverse the 100 dollars that was overcasted and abc that should have been credited is actually credited by 100 dollars this will make sure this rectification entry will make sure that both the errors are corrected simultaneously another example for compensating errors total of discount column on the credit side of cash book is undercasted by 10 and cleaning expense of dollars 10 not posted see if you remember the cash book both sides of the cash book had discount allowed on the debit side and discount received column on the credit side the total of these columns have to be posted to the relevant accounts at the end of each month so here where they're telling you discount column on the credit side of cash book so they refer to the discount received column is undercasted by 10 since it is undercasted undercasted means under total for example if the correct total of the account is let's say 350 it is actually done at 340 less by 10 dollars if the column is less total by 10 dollars it is obvious that it would have been posted to the discount received column also by 10 dollars less and the cleaning expense of dollars 10 is not posted see there's a difference between the term posted and recorded many students get confused here recorded the term recorded means not recorded in the books at all not posted means it's not posted to this specific ledger account only the other effect is given so if you if you if you understand this these errors you would realize that individually these errors are not two sided but when you combine them the effect of these errors is nil on the trial balance and hence they are compensating errors so can i try passing the rectification entry without using the correct and wrong entry here because directly also it would make sense for such errors now the total of discount received column is undercasted by 10 it means the discount received column was credited by 10 dollars less so can i say in my rectification entry i will have to credit my discount received column by dollars 10 and office expense sorry cleaning expenses of dollars 10 was not posted cleaning expenses the debit account since it is not posted i will have to give the effect in the cleaning expenses account debit 10 dollars i have directly done the rectification because for some errors it makes sense to do it directly rather than going 
rather than doing correct and wrong entry pass but if you feel like doing them you can go ahead and do the analysis first and then do the rectification so these were the different types of two sided errors the most common examples i have tried to cover here but obviously there's no guarantee that the exam questions or exam errors would be from here but at least these errors will give you an understanding of what are the different types of errors and you can try solving the other questions now coming to the one sided errors one sided errors are errors that lead to a difference in the trial balance what are the common one sided errors there will be a casting or a totaling error in the ledger accounts when you're taking a total of the debit or credit there's a error there or you're posting incorrect values to the debit or credit side of an account if the actual transaction is $500 to one of the accounts one of the effects debit or credit you've done not 500 but an incorrect amount you omit to post one of the effects of a transaction you either omit debit side or the credit side you post a transaction twice to an account there is a totaling error in the trial balance these are just this is an illustrative list of the one sided errors there can be so many other errors that lead to a difference in the trial balance when there is a difference in the trial balance what do you do obviously you can't leave a mismatched trial balance as it is you need to continue and prepare your financial statements after the trial balance so to match the trial balance for the time being there is something known as a suspense account that is used so that we can for the time being make sure our trial balance both sides are equal continue preparing our draft financial statements and then in future as and when we find the error we can rectify the error and the suspense account is eventually closed so suspense account is a temporary account open to complete the trial balance so that uh, financial statements can be prepared for the time being now one sided errors are rectified using the suspense account isn't it logical because any one sided error has an effect on the trial balance when it has an effect on the trial balance because of that one sided error there is a balance in the suspense account currently because suspense account was opened as a result of difference in trial balance so as in when you find the one sided errors you will have to give effect to the suspense account so that eventually suspense account is closed so how do you know how much to put in the suspense account and which side of the trial balance will you have to put the suspense account so let's take an example here let's say this is a trial balance extract of a trader uh, he's taken a total of both sides of the uh, trial balance the debit side comes to 63820 the credit side comes to 64950 so now since there's a mismatch in the trial balance to match the trial balance you will have to put the suspense balance in the column which is lower than the other column so here debit is lower than the credit so the difference of the credit and debit 1130 will have to be for the timing put in the debit column so that we can make sure that the both sides of the trial balance are equal for the time being once this this was done they prepared the financial statements later on the following errors were discovered by the accountant we will have a look at how to rectify each of these errors so purchase journal was overcasted by 300 dollars purchase journal if you remember the books of prime entries video you must have, you must be knowing that purchase journal records all the credit purchases at the end of the month total of purchase journal is taken which is then debited to the purchases account now since the purchase journal is overcasted by 300 can i say purchases account was extra debited by 300 so can i say to rectify we will have to credit the purchases by 300 now where do i give the debit effect of this rectification entry you can't leave the rectification entry like this none of your rectification entry should be such that debit and credit there's a mismatch so in order to correctly complete this entry you will have to give the balance in the suspense account because because of this transaction there was a difference in the trial balance and suspense account was credited by 300 so now we are reversing that by debiting suspense 300 now many students have a confusion in these types of errors where they see overcasted and they've made up their mind that whenever it's overcasted it is debit or credit whenever it is undercasted it is debit or credit it's not like that you have to analyze this account is a debit account or credit account because of the overcasting was it extra debited or credited and to reverse it or to give the additional effect whether i have to debit this account now or credit this account next one drawings by owner from the bank 660 was not posted in the drawings account it means cash book was done correctly you were correct correctly credited the cash book but it was not posted in the drawings account so what would be a correct entry here can i say our correct entry would be drawings debit 
six sixty and bank credit six sixty. But what is the wrong entry that we passed? They said that we have not debited our drawings account, so no debit is given. But our bank has been credited or cash book has been credited correctly. We assume that because there is no mention of the fact that cash book was not done correctly. If this was recorded, for example, then it means that it was not recorded in the cash book itself, and then it becomes a two-sided error. But here they've used the term posted. Posted means books of prime entry. The uh, transaction is recorded correctly, but not posted to the ledger account. Now, if you analyze here, bank was to be credited. It is credited. The only effect remains is the drawings have to be debited by six sixty. What do I credit here? Obviously, here you will have to credit your suspense account six sixty to make sure that suspense account is closed to the extent of this error. The third error that was there was rent was paid six thirty was entered as three sixty in the rent account. Again, keep in mind they've just told you it was entered as three sixty in the rent account only. Not in the cash book. So cash book or the payment entry is done correctly. It's just that the posting to the rent account was incorrect. So what would be my correct entry here? Rent debit six thirty. Let's say bank or you could use cash. Doesn't make a difference here. Credit six thirty. What was the wrong entry that has been passed? The rent instead of six thirty, they have recorded it as three sixty. But the bank part or the cash book part is correctly credited as six thirty. So to rectify this, obviously you will have to debit the rent by additional amount, which is the difference between six thirty and three sixty, comes to two hundred seventy dollars. We cannot credit bank here because bank is done correctly. Bank was to be credited by six thirty. It is credited by six thirty by the accountant here. So the only thing that can be done is the suspense credit. Two seventy. Fourth one, one fifty paid to Jones was credited to his account in the purchase ledger. So when I pay one fifty to Jones, what would be my correct entry? Jones debit one fifty, and cash or bank credit one fifty. So what have they told you? It was credited to his account in the purchase ledger. So Jones, which was to be debited, is actually credited one fifty. But did they mention that cash book was also? Done incorrectly or cash book was debited? No. So it is obvious that cash was also credited. Basically, they have credited both Jones and cash. Cash, which is credited, that is correct. There is no problem with that. But Jones, which was credited by one fifty, should have been debited by one fifty. So in my rectification, obviously, I will have to debit Jones by how much? Three hundred because one fifty to reverse the incorrect credit and the. Additional one fifty to give the effect of the correct entry. So Jones debit three hundred, suspense credit three hundred. Petty cash balance two hundred was omitted from the list of trial balance. Now this is one transaction where many students make a mistake. So imagine there's a trial balance, debit side and the credit side. When you do not write petty cash trial bal in the list of trial balance, obviously there will be a mismatch in the debit and credit side, and because of that. A suspense account was opened at two hundred just because of this error. So, can I say in my rectification once I find out this error, the one thing that I can do is put the petty cash two hundred in the list of trial balances, include it in the list of trial balances, and close the suspense account. So, suspense will be credited by two hundred. The question is what to debit? Should I debit petty cash two hundred? The answer is no. Why? Is there a mistake inside the petty cash balance? Is there a mistake inside the petty cash account? No, it's just that the amount of the balance is not included in the list of trial balance. To include it in the list of trial balance, I don't have to actually go and debit petty cash. So in this case, there will be no debit, but suspense will be credited because I have to close the suspense that was created because of this error. So once all the transactions are rectified using the suspense account, the one-sided errors are rectified. The next step is to prepare a suspense account. So let's see how will we prepare our suspense account using our knowledge of ledger entries. The first entry in the preparation of suspense account will always be the difference in trial balance that was initially recorded when the trial balance did not match. If you remember in the video, we had taken suspense account on the debit side as one one three zero. 
So this 1130 has to appear in the suspense account. In fact, the suspense account always has to begin with this amount. So this appears on the debit side as difference in trial balance 1130. So let's post the transactions individually now, all the rectification entries. In the first one, suspense is debited by 300. So go to the debit side of suspense account and record this entry as purchases 300. In the next entry, suspense is credited. So go to the credit side of suspense account and record this entry as drawings 663. So on for the all the other entries, suspense was credited and hence I will go and record all these transactions on the credit side of suspense account as rent, Jones and petty cash with the relevant amounts. Once you've posted all the transactions to the suspense account, the next step is to take the total on the debit and credit of the suspense account to see whether now the there is still a balance left in the account or the suspense account is closed. So if I take a total here, both sides, I get a total of 1430. What does this mean? This means that all errors that were there in the accounting records have been rectified as far as one-sided errors are concerned and we can say that now the accounting records are free from errors. What if there was a balance in suspense account if the debit was greater than credit or credit was greater than debit that indicates that there are still some undiscovered errors and which will have to be discovered in the future and rectified. Now, once rectification is done, obviously the rectification entries will have the effect on net profit also. So I have the rectification entries. Let me understand how will it affect my net profit. For example, we have a net draft net profit of 5000 for the year. We are trying to understand how will each rectification entry affect the profit. Will it increase the profit? Will it decrease the profit or will it have no effect on the profit? How do you first decide whether it has an effect on the profit or no? See the, you, see the accounts that have been used in the rectification entry. Is that account an income account or an expense account? If yes, then only it will have an effect on the net profit, which is obvious because these are the accounts only that are eventually transferred to the income statement to calculate the net profit. If an asset account or liability account is debited or credited in the rectification, that will not have an effect on the net profit, obviously. So the first rectification is purchases was credited by 300. When purchases is credited by 300, it means that purchases have been reduced by 300 that reduces your cost of sales and hence increases your net profit. The second one is where drawings is debited. Now the drawings is not neither an income account nor an expense account. So I can clearly say that it has no effect on the net profit for the year. My third transaction is where the rent is debited. When rent is debited, it means you're trying to increase the rent expense in the income statement. When that happens, expenses increase the net profit will obviously decrease. So minus 270 in the income statement and hence net profit calculation. The fourth entry is where Jones is debited. Now Jones was a supplier. Any changes in the supplier account does not have any effect on the net profit and hence no effect on the profit. In the same way, the, the last rectification entry, you do not see any income or any expense account being debited or credited and hence no effect on the net profit. So my final corrected profit will be 5,000, my draft profit plus 300 minus 270, which is equal to $5,030. I hope this video was useful for you. I have been, I was able to clear major parts of this topic. Obviously it is not possible to cover up all the types of errors in a single video or all parts of the chapter here, but major topics, major subparts have been covered here. Hope they're useful for you. Hope they boost your score in the exam. And if you enjoyed the video, please like the video, please share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.